Hello Tube View Pixies. Okay, um, this one doesn't work and I've had uh, three with the same problem. Um, and that is, I bought three of these in the past, two or three, I can't remember exactly how many, two or three. And um, every time, so it's sold on eBay as not working and almost always it's been um, open circuit speaker. So I've got the uh, meter here, go like that, you can see the meter's working. Put it across the terminals of the speaker and now this is actually a 75 ohm speaker, nothing. So what actually happens inside these little things is um, the water, the actual winding electromagnetic moving coil is is like hair. It has to be really thin copper wire emanated uh, enamel copper wire in order to bring the impedance up to match the output stage, which is a single transistor. So obviously. Um, you have to get, so let's, let's start by taking the thing apart, as these are the two screws, use the end, use the other end of the cover to keep the screws so you don't lose them. That's the first one, second one, okay. Oh, I'll, I'll quickly show you the thing. This is uh, the lovely um, original stylophone that came through the post today and it's sold as not working. I fully understood it was not working and I was hoping to be able to do repairs on it anyway. So, um, two screws that have been taken out. Then we've got this nut on the end, this ring nut on the end, which is the headphone socket. Now, the headphone socket is probably the most useful aspect of the stylophone because it can be, I've used them on quite a few um, uh, music tracks that I've done and uh, let's not remember, let's not forget that uh, Orbital used stylophones on one of their tracks as well. So you have to be careful not to snap anything, um, gentle as you can be. So that's the, that's the circuit board coming out there. That's where all the magic happens. And it really is magic. I love these things. And the number of times I've tried to build a stylophone and not been um, successful um, using circuits from other books. There was one where they suggested using um, 2K presets in series about 15 of them and it's, it's actually impossible to tune it's just a completely a un, unviable project if you ever see uh, like like this circuit for example uh, this is um they call this the the minstrel the minstrel it's an old magazine 70 75 and this they've got uh, similar in a way to the um, stylophone in the sense that you've got a u the unijunction device and uh, a string of potentiometers in this instance but the thing about this is uh, it's just impossible to tune them you, you just can't do it uh, you, you set one to the correct pitch and then you have to set the next one and of course you have to alter this one and each time you go along to try and set them to each pitch, you, you, it's the other one previous one you adjusted goes out. So it's just not viable. It's just a waste of time. And this, this here is my attempt at building one. 
and it, as, as you can see it's a string of 2.2k potentiometers uh, to act as um, um, an, L -C, uh, an RC network to produce each frequency but honestly if you see um, if any preset pots in parallel just don't bother to build it it just doesn't work so <sighs> First thing we we need to do is to take out the um, faulty speaker. Bye bye. Now, important thing to do if you're going to carry out a repair. Um, is to measure the thing and uh, zero. So the width, the size of the, um, are we on inches or CMs? Two, two point two three inches. So what we'll do is we'll switch it over to. So that's. Uh, 50, 56.57 uh, millimeters. Five point, okay, I've found a variety of similar size speakers. That's the same size. But it won't go in. And the reason why, place that there. Place the ring on top. the retaining um, ring, possibly. Maybe I've got it upside down. There we go. It goes in somehow like that, that's it. it. Goes in like that. And then of course the problem is you can't get the, the printed circuit board cannot go back in because the actual uh, ceramic magnet is, is too big. You, you'll never get that in there. So, um, you got to forget using a speaker of the same size that happens to have a ceramic magnet. So ceramic magnets are out. And people often wonder why I keep all keep so many speakers. I've got a big collection of speakers that have come out of radio sets and various other items, clock radios. Now this one happens to be the same size. And it's got a very tiny magnet on the front, on the back of it, okay? Now if you can get a speaker that is what I said it was, 5.7 centimetres, um, and, and also 75 ohms, and it's also got to have the Al Nico style magnet in there, in order that the thing will fit in, okay? Good luck getting one of those. Now this loudspeaker is 8 ohms and it works. However, if we were to just solder this in as, as, a, as a, just a direct replacement, um, we, we will run into issues and one particularly bad issue would be burning out of the output transistor um, because the resistance well it'd be too much current flowing through the output stage and it will just 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 end badly Now the easy repair that I've got in mind involves, um, this is a 75 ohm resistor. You could actually use something like a 68 ohms. 
so we've got a 68 ohm resistor and also it's about half a watt rating okay so we unsolder this um, yeah obviously replacing it the actual original speaker with um, with an 8 ohm speaker and a 60 68 ohm resistor will mean that the volume output from this musical instrument will be a huge would be a lot less so we, we I mean most of the time when I use a stylophone it's usually connected to um, an output device usually a multi-tracker or something like that a recorder of some sort And then we join that there too. So in fact what it is, it's an 8 ohm speaker with a 68 ohms resistor in series with it. <coughs> Bit of heat shrink sleeving to prevent any short circuits, that will put perfectly. So it needs to be, yeah that's, that's fine like that. Okay, so we feed that. Oh, by the way, the speaker in this instance is not polarized. You don't have to worry about phasing or anything of that sort. It's not something that's considered relevant with, um, with, a, with a stylophone. It's a simple device. Um, got to try and Shrink the heat shrink sleeving. Obviously, don't burn the speaker if you can help it. That wouldn't. That will end in tears. Aha! I've just forgotten something. Aha! It's easy to make a mistake, especially when you're a hoof bag who's got ME. Okay. Pop this on. Um, that way around. Okay. Just like that. A bit more solder on there. And the other wire, so that actually goes to the top furthest away from me and then we solder this one on um, that's right this goes through here that goes there like that a bit more solder there I think So I'll go as far as to say that most pieces of equipment with high impedance loudspeakers always do give trouble. Um, I mean there was a, a Philips ra valve radio design in the 1960s and um, in order to reduce the price of manufacture and perhaps give a better output sound at the speaker they used a, a five, about a 500 ohm resistance speaker 
um, to reduce to eliminate an output transformer which went straight to the anode and the usual instance was the usual was what used to happen with those Philips radios um, was um, open circuit speaker coil open circuit coil speaker so just high impedance speakers just generally don't work it's a shame really but there you are now um, so we've got the new speaker fitted replacement speaker not new get that one out the way obviously the, the headphone socket which is important or the output socket is important Take great care in putting the thing back together after the repair has been done. Right. Quick test to see if the thing works before putting it back on. It's much quieter than it would be had you had we used the. Obviously we're talking about a much reduced volume level, but for any serious use it would have been using the output socket. So that works, although it's much quieter. I mean to have a quiet stylophone is actually much better than having a stylophone that doesn't work at all. I mean it's a possibility you might be able to buy. Uh, the correct speaker for the job in the, the job in hand but uh, you know the amount, amount of time you have to wait for postage and god knows how much they charge these days for it and uh, I've actually on the my website I've got the schematic for um, the stylophone. It comes in the packet. These switches are a bit stiff, aren't they? It's interesting. I wonder why. So that's uh, obviously not a perfect repair, but it's an effective repair if you're stuck without, if you're stuck with a stylophone that doesn't work, always check the speaker to make sure it's not open circuit. Thank you for watching.